rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the second scripture reading that Pastor Roddy just read for you. I share with you today at verse 9. God said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever known people who are only concerned about themselves? Have you ever known people who they're only concerned about their own life? Years ago, when Woodrow Wilson was governor of New Jersey, a young man called him at home early one morning. He said very urgently, Mr. Governor, I am sorry to call you so early in the morning, but I wanted you to know that your state auditor just died, and I wanted to know if I could take his place. Woodrow Wilson thought about that for a moment, and then he said, well, I guess that's all right with me if it's all right with the undertaker. I wonder if that young man ever got the joke. I wonder if the young man ever got it that Woodrow Wilson was saying that it was all right with him if he was dead to take the place of the state auditor who had just died. People who only think about their own importance rarely get it. It's difficult living with people who think they're so important. That's why the Apostle Paul in the word of God before us this morning, was so concerned that he might give in to the temptation to think too highly about himself. Think about it. Paul was a great man, wasn't he? He had a lot of influence in the early Christian church. He was probably more educated than nearly any person in his day. Fourteen of the books of the New Testament are believed to have been written by him. Half of the book of Acts is about Paul and his missionary journeys. He was a great man, wasn't he? And it would have been so easy for Paul to become arrogant and proud and to think he was better than everyone around him. Except for one thing. Paul had a weakness. Paul had a weakness that kept reminding him that he wasn't perfect. Paul called his weakness a thorn in his flesh. Now we're not sure exactly what that thorn in the flesh was. Biblical scholars tell us that maybe Paul had trouble seeing, or maybe he had epilepsy, or maybe he had a speech problem. We don't know exactly what Paul's thorn in the flesh was, but it certainly bothered Paul and his ministry. Now, get this. Paul thought here that his thorn in the flesh might actually be a gift from God to him. Wow, that's really strange. A gift from God? Yeah. Paul thought that this thorn in the flesh would remind him of his weakness so he would have to trust God more in his life. Do you have a thorn in your flesh? Maybe it's a physical disability. Maybe it's a disease. Maybe it's a broken relationship. Maybe it's a family matter. Many of us have these thorns in the flesh, these weaknesses in our lives. A very proud man attended a Christian church. He he was wealthy, he had lots of money and fame, and he pretty much had everything he needed in life except for one day. The newspapers carried a story about his son who was arrested for murder. That shocked him. It devastated him. That humbled him more than anything else that had ever happened in his life. But this man was very fortunate. He had a great pastor and a great church family who helped to support him through this 
tough thorn in the flesh. And through his church family, this man was able to experience more love from God than he ever had before in his life. I can imagine that you all have something in your life that humbles you. Something in your life that just tears you apart. Maybe, just maybe this thorn in the flesh can also strengthen your relationship with God. Now God doesn't bring these thorns of the flesh into our lives. No, it's because of this sinful world that we live in that we all have these thorns in the flesh. But God's always around you to help you with your thorn in the flesh. And maybe, maybe this thorn is a gift from God to cause you to trust Him more in your life. Your prayers to God can help you through these thorns in your life. The Apostle Paul here used prayer to God to help him with the thorn in his flesh. Paul said, three times I prayed to God to take away this thorn in my flesh. It's not surprising that Paul would pray for this thorn in the flesh to be taken away from him. I mean, this thorn was a hindrance to his ministry. It made his life very painful. It caused a lot of difficulty in his life. It had been so much easier for him if he wouldn't have had this thorn in the flesh. And it's the same way with you and me, isn't it? Our lives would be so much easier if we wouldn't have these thorns in our flesh. But talking to God can help you through these thorns in your flesh. It helped the Apostle Paul and it can help you and me today to become closer to our God. Pastor Ben Patterson was diagnosed with two herniated discs in his back. He was in so much pain that all he could do was lie on the floor. It's the only way he could get rid of the pain. All he could do was pray. And so pray he did. He opened up the church directory and he started to pray for every member of his church. It not only helped the church to grow stronger, but it helped him to grow in his closeness with his God. Every week I send out about 50 birthday and anniversary cards to each of you. And in these birthday and anniversary cards, I write a special note to you, but I also, as I'm writing that card, say a little prayer for you. I hope those prayers help you, but I know they help me. Those prayers help me to grow in my closeness with God. Prayer works like that. God's love for you will help you to get through the thorn in your flesh. Knowing that Jesus died on a cross and that Jesus rose from the dead for you gives you the comfort of knowing that every one of your sins are forgiven. It gives you the certainty of knowing that you're going to spend an eternal life with your God in heaven. The Apostle Paul said about his thorn in the flesh, God said to me, my grace, my love is enough for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. Wow. Can you say that about the thorn in the flesh in your life? God's love is enough for you. For God's power is made perfect in your weakness. You see, your weakness is an opportunity for God to show his power in your life. You can grow closer to your God. But you can be a wonderful example to others around you. God can use you and your thorn in the flesh to lead people to know him and to know Jesus as their Savior. God can do great things through you and through your thorn in the flesh. The pastor Charles Spurgeon had a thorn in his flesh. 
He suffered from serious bouts with depression. And he talked to God about his depression. And it did help him to see the love of God in his life. But Pastor Spurgeon would remember and think about things. He thought about sitting beside a river. And he saw a little fish in the river, and the fish was drinking some of the water, but all of a sudden, the fish stopped drinking, and the fish said, I must not drink so much, or there'll be no water left. And the river said to the fish, Drink on, little fish. My water is enough for you. Then Pastor Spurgeon would remember and think about standing beside a large granary. And a little mouse was eating grain out of the granary. And all of a sudden the mouse stopped eating and said, I must not eat so much or the grain will all be gone. And the granary said, eat on little mouse. My grain is enough for you. Then Pastor Spurgeon Imagine standing on the top of a mountain. And there was this little man who was taking a deep breath of fresh air. And all of a sudden the man stopped and he said, I must not breathe too much or there'll be no air left. And the mountain said to the man, Breathe on, little man. My air is enough for you. Pastor Spurgeon said as he thought and imagined these things in his life, it helped him to feel God's love for him and to know that God's love was enough for him to get through his times of depression. Don't ever forget that in your life. Don't forget that. God's love is enough for you to get through the thorns in the flesh in your life. Talk to God about those thorns. Talk to him often. Feel God's amazing love for you. Hear God saying to you these special words. My love is enough for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. God bless you. Amen.